Hey, it's Bethany. I'm here answering all of your questions about starting your home care agency. So today I wanted to give you some basics. I thought let's give you three micro steps to getting started if you haven't already. All right. And before we begin, I just want to let you know that I am here to teach you all about starting your home care agency. I have been a home care agency owner myself since 2011. I'm also a family caregiver and uh, I just love all things caregiving. It's so wonderful, it's rewarding, and it's so needed. Okay, so those micro steps. Step number one that I want you to do, and this may sound like a little silly or something that you didn't think of, but I want you to search your heart. And the reason why I think it's important for all entrepreneurs in the home care agency space to do this is to really just kind of tap into why you want to do this. Connect to why you're doing this. Is it a personal reason? Is it somebody in your life that's needing home care services? Is it because you've had personal experiences, either good or bad, that are driving you to either keep going and have your own agency doing good things, or maybe it was a bad experience and you wanna be part of the change, or maybe it's something totally, completely different than what I just described. But I think sitting with your thoughts, kind of tapping into your heart and figuring out and connecting to why you want to have a home care agency. This is really, really important that you do this. And the reason why it's so important is because there's going to be days, there's going to be situations that come up in your business that are really, really hard. And you're going to go, why am I doing this? That's what you're going to say. Why am I doing this? Because this is so hard or this is so frustrating or I can't believe this is happening you're gonna have those moments. And so being able to connect back to why you said that you wanted to have a home care agency is what will keep you going. I promise, I promise. That's what's gonna help keep you going. You gotta have that strong connection, that strong root for doing this and um, just building off of that foundation, okay? So that's micro step number one. Micro step number two is getting your EIN number. A lot of people get overwhelmed by this. They're like, oh my gosh, if I do that, that means I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get official, right? Well, yes, but there's really no pressure to it. So you can get an EIN number by going to irs.gov and uh, just type in EIN. So that stands for Employer Identification Number. So they want to know, they're going to identify you if you're an employer. And this is all for tax purposes, of course, but it's also one of those steps to starting your business. Now, if you decide to call in um, for your EIN number, it takes like I don't know, maybe a half hour or so. It's a very quick and easy process. And I like to add this to uh, my startup list because it's something you can get done, obviously within a day uh, when it comes to starting your business where other things might take longer. This is a quick win, get it done, get it set up. And so then that's out of the way. You have your EIN and you're gonna be ready to start hiring employees once all the other pieces come into play. All right, micro step number three is going to be creating your business name. So you want to come up with something that is just feels right to you, of course, and also you're going to want to check out on the registration and trademark websites to make sure that nobody else has that name. 
That's really, really important. A lot of times you see in businesses, people will use their first name, their last name, and that's really because that's theirs legally and nobody can say differently about it. But something like, uh, let's say, something that's like a, a common phrase that you might use, like peace of mind. Say you have a home care agency called peace of mind home care, right? That sounds lovely. We all want peace of mind. However, uh, somebody else could, even though it's a common phrase, somebody could trademark that. Now, if I said Bethany's peace of mind uh, home care or Peace of Mind Home Care by Bethany Radcliffe or something of that nature, if I could include my name in it somehow and then register and trademark that, then that would be a different ball game. So it's really easy to go online to that database and just punch in what you're thinking of and just make sure that nobody else has it because that can be a headache down the road if you are operating under a name that actually belongs to somebody else even in another state it can be a headache okay so those are my three micro steps for you to go ahead and implement get started on those you can start on them today if that feels right to you and i will see you in the next video Take care.